what up today's video format is gonna be a little bit weird the process this whole process of getting the tires was kind of a struggle first of all saving up enough money to get the tires was the challenge in itself but the biggest part was waiting for the tires to come when I ordered the tires I thought they were all gonna come at once they came in three shipments four tires three shipments I don't, I don't know why that worked the way it did but that's what happened so it was kind of sporadic Oh man, is that what I think it is? Ooh, ooh, ooh tires. Holy. Ugh. This office space is becoming nothing but a car part storage. On the day that I actually worked on getting the tires mounted and balanced, it was actually a work day for me. So as soon as I came home for work, that's what I went to handle right away. Gonna try to get an early start today. Let's go mount these tires. So it was kind of a struggle to get these tires mounted because I don't, for some reason, most of the shops I called, um, they wouldn't mount my rear tires because it was too wide. I didn't think 275 was that wide. Anyways, there were some complications. One of my homie shops couldn't mount it for me because of the size. And then the other one that I usually go to to get uh, some work that I can't do myself done, uh, his balance machine was down. However, he was able to help me out uh, with a tire company that his garage works with. Shout outs to Alex Saleh at Tucker Automotive, All Pro Auto. Yeah, man. So after I got the tires mounted, we'll fast forward, we come back home and we get to work on the tires. I'm actually really hungry now, so I'm gonna go eat first and then come back and handle this. I'm gonna need this today. I don't usually drink coffee, but today has been a long day. That pop is so satisfying. Yeah, yeah, I needed it. For the first time, I needed coffee so bad. I don't know if it was just coffee or a sugar drink. I needed sugar. I've been up since 5 a.m. and I'm really low on sugars, really low. After I took my break, I dicked around for a bit, and then I got to work on the wheels. Word of advice, before putting your car up on jack stands, break your lug nuts before you jack them up. Makes it a world easier when you're trying to take your wheels off. Another helpful tool to have in your garage is a rolling stool. This will save so much back problems. This is why you should break your bolts before raising your car. This is so much easier to undo and the tire won't spin on you because you're putting a bunch of force on it trying to break it. Before I move forward, I'm gonna clean this rust off because it's important that I have a smooth surface on this hub board because what's gonna be really important are these hub rings. So, the way I clean off these rusts, the best way that I found was I used some hot water, some WD-40, and some kind of a wired sponge. So I just get this hot water, do that, scrub it as best I can, spray it with some WD-40, let it sit for a bit, and then back at it with the wired sponge. So this method I found is one of the better methods to free any areas on your car that has rust on it from rust. Once that's clean, I go back at it again, one more round of hot water, and create a good surface for your hub ring. Snug fit. Ooh, yeah, it has come to my attention that I might need to invest in a fan for this garage. It gets really hot here and really stuffy in this garage. Okay, this is about to be a hell of a crash course on everything you need to know before buying aftermarket wheels. Let's start with the basics. When you are buying anything uh, wheel related, the first thing you're probably going to look at is the tire size, right? So on here, you're going to see three big numbers. It looks a little something like this. Three digit numbers somewhere in the high 190s, 100s, somewhere in the 200s, could go up to 300s, whatever. It's three numbers. 
and then you have a double digit number and another double digit number. So the first number, this 255, it refers to how wide the, the tire is. So this is the 255. The second number is the is 35 and that's your sidewall. So what the sidewall is, it's, it's how thick this is. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the best way to explain it is it is the percentage of the width of your tire. So 35 refers to it being 35% of the width of my tire. And then the last number that you'll see, the 18 right here, the last number refers to the diameter of your wheel or your rim. So because I'm running 18 inch wheels, it's an 18 tire. So 255, how wide it is. 35 is the sidewall and 18 is the inner diameter of your tire or the diameter of your wheel. The next numbers that you're gonna wanna know about are these numbers. So when you buy wheels, they're gonna ask for some numbers that look like this. This says five by 114.3. What that means is this first number refers to how many lug nuts are on the, tire, uh, are on the wheel. So on my Z, it's five lugs. I need a five lug wheel. The second number is the distance between the studs on your car. So, if we look over here, right? You see these studs? If, you have, if I measure from the middle of the stud to the middle of the furthest stud, so like that, it is 114.3 millimeters. This is measured in millimeters. Another number that you're gonna see is gonna look like this. And that says 18 by 9.5. Going back to the wheel, the first number, the 18, refers to, again, the diameter of the wheel. This is 18 inches. The second number, 9.5, is how wide your wheel is. So, my wheel is 9.5. The last number that you will see when you buy aftermarket wheels is this. That says plus 15. And what that means is that is your offset. And what an offset is, is, okay, so take my wheel and you get the center, right? From the center to the mounting face, which is the inside here, this is what meets the hub. From the center to the mounting face, that's your offset. So mine's is a 15 offset. So from the center to the mounting face is 15 millimeters. One of the final components that you need to be familiar with when buying aftermarket wheels is whether it's hub centric. So, hub centric means that it's centered around the hub. That's how you get it to be balanced. So, this is really important because if you do not get this, you will get a lot of wobbles at about highway speeds, 80, 75 miles per hour. Here's the important part. First, find out how big your hub board is. So this is your hub. This is where your wheel is gonna mount. This circle right here, that's your hub board. How big it is in diameter, that's your that's what you need to find out. On this car, it is a 66.1 millimeter. The center bore on my new wheels is 73.1 millimeter. 60, 66 point, 66. Seven millimeter difference. When I put the wheel on between the hub bore, this, and the center bore on my wheel, this, this is the center bore, there is a seven millimeter gap. So imagine hub bore, center bore. There's a seven millimeter gap. So when you drive, even if, if it's low speeds, it's still gonna, there's, there's some shaking room. So that's why you need to have hub rings to prevent from shaking. That's also why I cleaned off the rust so I can have a snug fit, the hub and my center bore on the wheels. So when you buy hub rings, the inner diameter, the ID, is what's gonna be attached to your hub. So your ID needs to be your hub size. Your OD, which is your outer diameter, needs to be the size of your center bore. So, this is a 66.1 to 73.1 hub ring. 66.1, inner ring 66.1, snug fit. For most people that are really concerned about, you know, the static life and fitment, the two numbers that are most important are, is the sidewall number and the, your offset. So your offset is what's gonna bring your wheel out towards the fender or not, and your sidewall is how, is how close it's gonna meet your fender depending on your wheel size. With that being said, let's mount these wheels.
For all my Z owners out there, you're gonna find this like this random stud on your front hubs. This doesn't hold anything in. All it does is prevent you from installing your front wheels, I mean your rear wheels into your front. So if you're having a hard time putting on your aftermarket wheels, just remove this. All it's doing is holding in a bushing. With that much thread, you're not holding in the hub. There's nothing it's holding in. It's okay to take it off. This is the little random stud that I'm talking about. It's okay to remove it. Just for safety, um, I'm gonna torque it down a little bit tighter before I drop it down, just because there are hub rings and I wanna make sure that the mounting face and the hub face is close together. <laughs> Walk into the complete frame. It looks good. Is this your new tire? That's my sister. <laughs> I'm hungry, so I'm gonna eat and then wash my car. And look how bald my tires are. Dang, that's dangerous. I know. Two key things when you shoot uh, when you tighten your wheels with the impact gun. First, when you tighten it. You want to do it in the star pattern. Start at one bolt, go to the next furthest one from it. You're moving in the star pattern, yeah? Okay, once you've done the star pattern, you start at any bolt and now you go in a circle. And that's how I tighten, uh, tighten down wheels. Better safe than sorry. He would be cutting the grass. Okay, so before I speak too soon, I'm gonna go ahead and take this out for a test drive. And to see how lighter wheels affect the driving experience of this car. Ooh, I'm like nervous and stoked at the same time. I feel a lot safer now knowing that I have uh, new tires. My rear ones were so bald. Somehow the acceleration feels more responsive. It feels a lot more responsive. Oh, it feels so much better. This car feels so much better. It feels amazing. Damn, these feel good. It feels so much more responsive. Could be because I have more grip on my tires too. <laughs> oh, I'm so soaked. No wobbles, we're at 40. Come on, let me go, let me go. We're at 40, at 60. No wobbles. That is why hub centric rings are so important. Because once you get up to higher speeds, you want to have confidence and make sure that your wheel is on there snug. You want it to fit right. Especially if you want if you want to do some spirited driving, your wheels are so important. That's like that's literally the most important part on your car is your wheels. Your wheels and your tires. Oh, I'm so stoked. I'm I'm super happy about this. So to recap, what I want you to take away from this video is how to read and what to look for when you do research for aftermarket wheels because it's not as simple as, oh, that wheel's pretty, I'm gonna buy it for my car. You have to make sure it fits. Lug patterns, lug dis uh, stud patterns and stud dis distances play a huge role. You, you gotta understand your uh, your bore sizes, uh, your hub bore and your center bore and your wheel. Um, yeah, that was, that was pretty much all I did today. I handled the wheels, get them on the car. And after that, just helping my sister wash her car. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Catch you guys on the next one. Peace. Yes. Yeah. Yeah.